All right, so get this picture. The 1982 arcades are like everywhere. Atari is the king of home consoles. Yeah. But there's this like total underdog getting ready to shake things up. Oh, yeah. The Colco Vision. <laughs> We're diving deep into its story today. Awesome. And trust me, this is way more than just like looking at some old tech. Right. We've got Wikipedia articles, uh -huh. retro gaming, deep dives, even a YouTube retrospective. Nice. And what we're finding is a story of ambition. Some seriously clever moves. Uh-huh. And maybe a couple of risks that didn't really work out. Yeah, what's really fascinating is that Colco wasn't like some big tech company or anything. Right. They started way back in 1932. Wow. Making leather goods. Leather goods. Yeah, then they moved on to toys, plastic pools, you know. Okay. Always adapting to whatever the market needed. Makes sense. They even tried out gaming early on with the Telstar. Oh, yeah, I remember that. A Pong console. That's right, constantly evolving. <laughs> yeah. But the Colco Vision, that was a whole other level. They were aiming high. They went straight up against Atari and Intellivision. Wow. Promising better graphics, sound expandability, the whole package. They wanted to be the best. Yeah. It cost $175, so a little more than the others. A premium price. But they were swinging for the fences. They were going all out. And their biggest swing, getting those exclusive rights to Donkey Kong. Oh, man, Donkey Kong. You remember that was the arcade hit? Oh, absolutely. And Coleco... They made sure it looked amazing on their system. Okay, this is where things get interesting. Right. So they didn't just make Donkey Kong great on ColcoVision. Uh -huh. They made it look bad on purpose on other consoles. Can you imagine that? Pure marketing genius. That's wild. So you walk into a store and you see Donkey Kong uh -huh. looking all amazing on one console yeah. and then a blurry mess on the others. What a comparison. It was such a power play and it worked. I bet. Bundling Donkey Kong with the Colco Vision. Smart move. Made it the must-have Christmas gift that year. Oh, yeah. But beyond the marketing, the tech itself was really impressive. Okay, so what were they working with? They used the Zilog Z80 processor. Zilog Z80. Which was so powerful, it ended up in home computers later. Really? Oh, and they yeah. packed it with more RAM than any other console. More RAM, more power. Exactly. More RAM meant detailed graphics. They were going for that arcade quality. And they delivered the TMS9911 graphics chip. TMS9911 chip. Gave you this smooth, colorful gameplay. Like bringing the arcade home. It really was, and even the sound chip, the TI sound chip. TI sound chip. Was ahead of its time. That same chip ended up in the IBM PCJR. You're kidding. Nope, they weren't messing around. This was serious computing power. Not just another toy. Not at all. I'm seeing these names, Z80 TI sound chip, and it's clicking. Yeah. The Colco Vision, it wasn't just some fad. Right. It actually influenced later consoles like the Sega Master System uh -huh. and those MSX computers. It's like a technological ancestor. It's a set of standard. Exactly. And get this, they were obsessed with expansion. Expansion. Yeah. Not just talking about it. They delivered. Okay. They had this dedicated port right on the front for all kinds of add-ons. So they were thinking ahead. Absolutely. I'm looking at this list of expansion modules and hold on a steering wheel. Yeah. With a gas pedal. Uh-huh. In 1982. Yeah. Were people even ready for that kind of immersion? That's a good question. But expansion module hashtag one is even wilder. Okay. Let's hear it. It let you play Atari 2600 games. What? Coleco basically cloned their competitor. That's bold. Atari sued, of course. What happened? And they lost all because Atari hadn't properly patented their hardware. Wow. Talk about adding insult to injury. It was a bold move, but those expansions went way beyond just playing your rival's games. Okay, so what else did they have? They had the roller controller, a trackball. Oh, a trackball. Interesting. And the super action controllers. The super action controllers. Loaded with joysticks, keypads, buttons galore. They really went all out. They were constantly pushing the limits of what a console could do. So we've got this powerhouse console. Yeah. Near perfect arcade ports, crazy expansions. Uh huh. It's like they were on top of the world. It could seem that way. But this drive for expansion, for pushing boundaries. Yeah. It also led to their biggest gamble. Ah, uh, yes. The Atom. Okay. I'm definitely hearing some warning bells there. It's where things get really interesting uh, and maybe a little messy. What happened? The Atom, it's like the name itself became like synonymous with 
not success. Yeah. From what I'm gathering. Right. It was supposed to be this like revolutionary expansion for the Colco Vision. Right. Turning it into like a full blown computer. Exactly. Right. Riding that home computer wave, it seemed like the next logical step. Yeah. And the hype, oh man, it was through the roof. Really? Magazine covers, TV commercials, the whole nine yards. They went all out. People were ready for the future and Colco promised to deliver. So what went wrong? Was it just bad timing with the video game crash of 83? Well, the crash definitely played a role, but the Atom itself, it had some serious flaws. Okay. Our sources, especially that review from the video game critic, Yeah. they don't hold back. What did they say? Technical problems, they plagued the system from the start. Oh no. It was unreliable, prone to errors, frankly, a bit of a mess. That's a shame, especially after such a strong start with the Colco vision. Yeah. It's like they fumbled the ball right at the goal line. It was a major blow to Coleco's reputation. That's imagine. Imagine putting all that money and effort into this groundbreaking expansion, all right. only for it to become known for being faulty. Ouch. Consumers lost faith retailers started pulling the atom from shelves. It makes you wonder if the ambition that fueled their success also led to their downfall. Yeah. They were always pushing boundaries. They were. But sometimes those boundaries push back. It's a cautionary tale about overreaching, no doubt. Yeah. But before we get too caught up in the Atom's failure, okay. let's not forget what made the ColcoVision great the games. All right, we've got this list of titles here. Zaxxon Turbo Venture Mouse Trap. Yeah. Ladybug Time Pilot Pepper to Second. Smurf Rescue in Gargamel's Castle. So many classics. River Raid Gorf. So many classics. Mm. What were some standouts besides Donkey Kong? Well, Zaxxon is a great example of their ambition for arcade perfect ports. Okay. It was an isometric shooter. Think of it like a 3D view uh -huh. from a slightly tilted angle. Okay, I can picture that. The ColecoVision version, it came remarkably close to capturing the arcade experience. Really? With detailed graphics and intense gameplay. Wow, but I keep seeing these mentions of scrolling issues. Yeah. Especially with side-scrolling games. Right. Was that a hardware limitation? Unfortunately, yes. The ColcoVision struggled with smooth scrolling, which yeah. impacted games like Tutum Cam, Tutum Cam, a fast-paced maze game. I remember that one. Even though the gameplay was solid, that choppy scrolling was a noticeable drawback. Yeah, I could see that. Okay, so not every port was perfect, but that game list, Ladybug Venture, those are some seriously nostalgic titles. They are. What made those games special? They highlighted the ColcoVision's strengths. Okay, how so? Ladybug, with its simple but addictive maze gameplay, mm -hmm. was a perfect fit for the console's controller. Right. And Venture, a classic dungeon crawler yeah. where you collect treasure and battle monsters, yeah. showcased the controller's keypad for quick inventory management. So they weren't just good ports. Right. They were well suited for the ColcoVision's unique hardware. Exactly. They understood the console's strengths and they played to them. And let's not forget those sports titles. Oh yeah, those are good. The video game critic actually praised them, even with the scrolling issues. They did. Baseball and football on the ColcoVision. They really captured the spirit of those sports. They did. It's mind-blowing to think about how... Those games were pushing the limits of home console technology back then. It was a different time. I mean, they seem simple now, but 1982, this was revolutionary. It really was. And while the Atom might have overshadowed the ColcoVision's legacy, yeah. we can't forget its contribution to gaming history. It's true. It showed what was possible with dedicated gaming hardware, right. like paving the way for future consoles. It's a classic yeah. underdog story. It is. Leather goods and swimming pools. Yeah. And then... Bam, they're taking on the giants of the gaming world. It's amazing. For a brief shining moment, it felt like they were on top. They were definitely a force to be reckoned with. It's a reminder that innovation can come from anywhere. It's true. And that sometimes even the most ambitious dreams can come crashing down. Yeah, that's part of the story too. It also makes you think about the what ifs. The what ifs. What if the Atom had been a success? Right. Could they have challenged Nintendo for dominance? Interesting question. What if Atari had actually patented their hardware? Oh, wow. Would the ColcoVision have even existed? Those are great questions. Yeah. And ones that lead us to another fascinating aspect of the ColcoVision story. Something that speaks to its enduring legacy. Okay, you've got me hooked. What's the next chapter in this retro saga? Okay, so spill the beans. Yeah. What's this about an enduring legacy for the ColcoVision? I thought we covered it all, the ambition... The Donkey Kong thing, the Atom disaster. What else is there? Well, it turns out the ColcoVision story doesn't end in 1985. Really? Yeah. In fact, it's still being written today. Get out of here. 
All thanks to a dedicated community of homebrew developers. Hold on, homebrew. Uh-huh. You mean like people are still making new games? Yeah. For a console that's over 40 years old? Exactly. That's incredible. It is, and it really shows you the passion and creativity yeah. within the retro gaming community. For sure. These developers, they're not just rehashing old ideas. Okay. They're pushing the boundaries of what this old hardware can do. I'm impressed. Our sources mentioned a game called Keftris. Oh, yeah. Released in 1996, a Tetris clone. Uh-huh. And the first homebrew game for the Colca Vision. That's right. Imagine that, a brand new game. I know. For a console that had been discontinued for over a decade. It's amazing. Keftris was just the beginning. So it started something new. It proved that there was still life in the Colco Vision, uh -huh. that it could be more than just a nostalgic relic. Right. And since then, the homebrew scene has just exploded. So what kind of games are we talking about? Mm. Is it all just like recreations of classic arcade titles? It's a real mix. Okay. Some developers focus on creating original games. Okay. Exploring genres and gameplay mechanics that weren't even possible back then. Oh, wow. So new ideas. Yeah. And others are porting games from other classic systems. So giving them a second life. Exactly. A new lease on life on the Colco Vision. Wow. So it's like this whole hidden library of games. Yeah. A secret treasure trove for retro gaming enthusiasts. Exactly. It's a testament to the enduring power of these classic consoles. Yeah. And the ingenuity of the people who keep them alive. Absolutely. Yeah. I have to ask, though, what about the technical challenges? Developing for the Colco Vision. It's not like firing up Unity or Unreal Engine. No, it's not. There's no readily available dev kit, right? Not really. That's what blows my mind. Yeah. No fancy tools. No massive online support forums. Right. These developers are working with limited resources. Yeah. Relying on their own ingenuity to overcome technical hurdles. They're dedicated. And it's a true labor of love. Absolutely. They're pushing the limits of both the hardware and their own programming skills. That's amazing. And the results speak for themselves, the quality of these homebrew games. Yeah. It's often remarkable. You can see the dedication and passion put mm -hmm. into every pixel. It makes you wonder, what if the Atom hadn't been such a disaster? Yeah. Could Colico have fostered this kind of community back in the 80s? That's a great question. Imagine the possibilities. With the Atom's expanded capabilities, yeah. they could have opened up a whole new world of game development. Right. Attracting a passionate community of creators. That would have been something. Maybe the Colca Vision would have become a platform mm -hmm. for both commercial and independent games. Wow. Flourishing alongside those early home computers. It's like a glimpse into an alternate timeline. It is. Where the Colca Vision thrived. Yeah. Not just as a gaming console, but as a creative hub. That's a cool thought. But even without that alternate history, its legacy lives on. It does. Not just in the memories of those who played it back in the day. Right. But in this vibrant community. Yeah. That continues to create new experiences for it. And that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Yeah. Even though a console might be discontinued, mm -hmm. its impact can endure. Right. Evolving and transforming through the passion of its fans. That's powerful. The Colca Vision story reminds us that the spirit of innovation and creativity, yeah. it never truly dies. So for anyone listening who's feeling that nostalgic pull for retro gaming, yeah. or maybe just appreciates the dedication of those who keep classic consoles alive, huh. do yourself a favor and check out the world of Colca Vision Homebrew. It's worth it. It's a trip back in time with a modern twist. You might be surprised at what you discover. And on that note, we wrap up our deep dive into the Colca Vision. Great episode. A tale of ambition, innovation, resilience. Yeah. And a reminder that there's always more to discover. Always. Even in the world of retro gaming. Keep exploring. Keep playing. Right. And never stop appreciating those who paved the way. Until next time. Happy gaming. <laughs>